Hi, everyone, and welcome to Signature West Podcast. I'm your host, Sam West from Palm Springs, California. Uh, we are in the month of June, the month of pride, LGBTQ proud. And um, in the spirit of the month of pride and the month of June, my guest today, Mr. Ron DeHart, he is the president of Palm Springs Pride. Hi, Ron. Hey, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Excellent. So, happy Pride. Happy Pride. June is Worldwide Pride Month. That's right. So, you're the president of Palm Springs Pride. How and when did that start? Uh, I started in this role in 2010 um, and uh, have uh, continued in, in, in as president and, and promoted to uh, CEO of the organization a few years back. But I've been volunteering with the organization since uh, 2005. And I'm assuming that you like it, otherwise you wouldn't still be here. Yeah, you know, it's it just is it's it's a great way to uh, give back into the community and in 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 a way and with something that uh, that I'm really passionate about. So how long have you been perfect. here in Palm Springs? I uh, come you know coming back and forth since 2005, living here since 2010. Okay. Okay. So last year, obviously, for all prides. Uh, Palm Springs Pride was canceled. How did that impact the organization and the community? And what did you see that, that was very impactful on, on, on the, on, to, for the town and for the people that live in Palm Springs? Sure. Yeah, I, I'm not. I'm not sure if we ever uh, can cancel Pride, and and uh, we didn't necessarily cancel Pride in, in Palm Springs. It just took on a different face. Uh, you know, it was it was very important in, uh, especially with COVID going on and, and the isolation that everybody was experiencing, um, e uh, even up to that point in time, that we did something that still was able to bring the community together and and. And help our community feel a part of something bigger than uh, sitting at home and dusting their house and cleaning the rooms for right. the 50 right? right so uh, you know we shifted um, you know we shifted programming so programs were available virtually uh, people were able to participate in in uh, and watch past prides and many people for the first time have never seen our pride uh, parades uh, many of our local residents have have marched in the parade, so they really don't get to see it. So this was a great time for them to see um, uh, a number of our, our our past prides. We rebroadcast those. Uh, we had um, you know a virtual 5K run and walk where people still were encouraged to go out and exercise and have fun, but you did it on your own. You didn't come and gather with a group of 500 people and 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 run a 5K walk or run. And then our flag raising ceremony. You know traditionally that's been an in person activity, primarily for the media. And we've only, you know, maybe we've had a couple dozen folks attend the flag raising, which is symbolic of the start of Pride Weekend. Right. And uh, last year, we rose our custom made 30 foot by 50 foot Pride flag at City Hall. And uh, during the broadcast, we had several thousand people watching uh, the flag raising. And since then, we've had thousands of people from around the world uh, watch it and see this incredible sight in Palm Springs with this flag going 178 feet in the air in front of City Hall. So is that uh, so number there higher than usual? Little things that were done that still made pride happen mm -hmm. in Palm Springs. So is that number that you just mentioned higher than usual than the normal uh, pride that we have? Uh, that attended the flag raising? Yeah, yeah so normally there's just a couple dozen people who, who attend because it's not, in, it's not intended, you know, we haven't built it up to be a big community event where everybody comes and gathers. Um, you know, it's usually at 10 a.m. in the morning. Uh, it's not a perfect time if you want to get people to come out to begin with. Uh, but, um, you know, having it online, people were, if they were in their office, uh, at their home office, they just were able to click the, right. click the internet and, and watch it while they were sipping a cup of tea at home. Uh, so that really brought pride into their homes. And it was, uh, it was a, a, a 
a, a great production showing the flag raisings from throughout the city that occurred and, uh, and then of course the, the, the flag raising at City Hall. And we'll do the same thing this year. Um, we're just not sure if the flag raising will be at City Hall or if we'll move it downtown again where it was uh, in 2018 when we did it for the very first time. So speaking of this year, so I just made a confession last week that I have never been to Palm Springs Pride. I know, ah. I know, don't judge. Um, we, we, it, we don't have very many virgins left in these parts. Well, so I, 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 I'll, yeah, and I've lived, I've been to most prides and I've lived in LA all my life. So for some reason, I just never made it. So for me this year is gonna be as new as, as, as a virgin can be. So post COVID, what would it look like and what changes are being made, if any, uh, from the previous years? Well, I, I think there's, there's, there's a couple things that are already different. There is just a feeling of excitement in the air. And, and this is June. Normally, we don't get this feeling of excitement until you know, September or October. Right. But there really, there's truly a different feeling about Pride in Palm Springs this year. And, and I think that has to come, that comes back to, you know, COVID. We're coming out of COVID. Um, it, uh, it looks good. We're starting to see, you know, the, the, the sh guidelines in our rear view mirror. And uh, people have had an emotional, uh, you know, a year and a half. It's, it's, re it's, it's really hit people mentally in different ways. Um, and, and, you know, we've been isolated for the most part, um, yep. you know, for almost a year and a half. Yep. People are ready to come, come out and be with their friends. They want to be with their family. They want to go and, and just walk up and down Palm Canyon. They just want to have that freedom again. And, and I think we're going to, we're going to be able to do that. Um, everything is pointing in the right direction with the health figures, uh, the, the positive numbers and, you know, are the deaths that are occurring still today um, are, are going in a great direction. Um, the community is still being, uh, for the most part, we're being very good and mm -hmm. doing what we're supposed to be doing. Okay. So I think as long as we continue to follow the guidelines, uh, we're going to see uh, a traditional pride event that people will uh, have uh, in their ima imagination from years past. Uh, the festival, uh, we'll be back down on Palm Canyon and, and the surrounding streets and our pride parade, uh, which happens on Sunday, November 7th at 10 a.m. Uh, that's going to continue. And the difference is going to be they're both going to be much bigger events and activities. How we, so? We, How so? Well, we... we Fortunately for Palm Springs, and 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 sad, and and we're our heart goes out to our brothers and sisters with the Pride organizations in Los Angeles, Long Beach, San Diego, San Francisco, who aren't able to have their traditional large in-person events this year because they typically happen this month, and uh, San Diego is is uh, in middle of July. And, and the health guidelines still are not lifted. You know, we're still under uh, some guidelines uh, in the state of California. And uh, so we're not, everybody who lives in Southern California, basically, um, Palm Springs will be their opportunity to come and celebrate uh, uh, an outdoor pride with their friends, a uh, great weekend getaway. And uh, we normally get a lot of out of town traffic. 61% of our audience comes from out of town. This year, the expectation is that's going to be even greater. The attendance is going to grow and we'll have more parade spectators. We'll have more people in the parade. Uh, so we've extended the parade from a two hour parade to uh, two and a half hours. And uh, we'll just have more attendance at the festival um, because it's the only uh, only pride event that people are really gonna be able to participate in this year on a large scale basis. And we're a very accessible pride event. We're free. There's not an admission ticket that's required that uh, serves as a barrier for many people in other communities. And in Palm Springs, we've, we've been able to keep our pride free. And uh, that's why we see a, a real great mix of, um, you know, uh, uh, 
all different diverse individuals and different backgrounds and grandma and grandpa walking up and down the street and and uh, youth participating and and so many women participating and, and we're seeing more and more um, same sex couples coming out and, and couples with children, you know, that's, that's just a great sight to see in Palm Springs. So, um, you know, we're, we're excited that we're going to be able to have that in-person experience again. So to just to clarify for the audience that are listening, uh, most prides you mentioned earlier are in June. Palm Springs pride is in November. So I guess the silver lining because of what's going on now, as you mentioned earlier, Palm Springs pride would be the first one live um quote unquote first lar so lar first large yeah first large scale uh in-person event um you know pride event in california there's some other smaller uh communities that are able to do some of their events in, in a very small scale right. we're talking about 140,000 people so mm -hmm. you know this this is a this is a large scale event um, and, and uh, you know, we, in 2019, we had 140,000 folks attending our official events. So we, we know already that that number is going to increase this year. So my next question would be, and I already answered the first one, you already answered it. How did Pride evolve since you've been around, since you've seen it till now? Obviously, the number had grown tremendously and it's going to even grow more this year for the obvious reasons. And the Part B, B of this question, is the city prepared for that amount of number increase? That's usually, that's not usually the case. Um, sure. Sounds like we're gonna have a and, lot and, more people. And, um, you know, the, the Pride, Pride event in Palm Springs has been the largest uh, event, the largest gathering of people in the city uh, um, of the year for uh, many years. So we we have been the largest gathering of people, regardless of it being a Pride event. It has been the city's largest gathering of people for, for many years. So I've been missing out, basically. So the, the, and the city, we've had a lot of practice. Uh, we've got great stakeholders with our partners at the city. Um, we've, we work very closely. We work year round with um, the city fire, police, traffic control, and all the departments within the city of Palm Springs to make sure that um, you know, an event of this size is able to come off and, 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 and be as, uh, you know, uh, as safe as it possibly can be with that many people. Uh, so is the city ready? Without a doubt, we're, we're ready. Uh, the city's ready um, and, and our, our planning will continue. You know, we, we just have a few months to go, um, but this is just uh, the, the fine tuning and, and uh, you know, scheduling of, of folks that happens in the next few months. Um, but yes, yeah, city's ready. And, and where did we come from? You know, it's, uh, you know, I think that's, that's a really interesting question. And for people who, who may know Palm Springs Pride from years ago, you know, we were known, our, our, the perception of Palm Springs Pride was, you know, an elderly white man's pride event. Um, we didn't have a lot of women participating. We had virtually no youth, very few youth would participate in our event. And, and a good year was about 15,000 people would participate um, in, in the, the festival. And that was about when? Roughly. So, you know, that took us through the 90s and we continued, you know, that perception and that attendance level continued through about, uh, through 2010. Right. So in 2010, 2011, we started to uh, do activities out of the Sunrise Stadium where Pride had been for the prior 10 years and do more uh, downtown. Uh, we started having the arenas block party during Pride weekend. And uh, we did that for a few years. And uh, you know, eventually we ended up closing Palm Canyon Drive and moving our entire festival downtown in 2012, 13, something like that. Um, so we've been downtown for a good number of years and, and we've seen the growth. The growth we've seen is, I think, twofold is, is everybody wants to be downtown. You know, that's, that's the first and foremost thing. Downtown's fun. Downtown's where the restaurants and bars and shopping are. Uh, downtown's fun because you can walk up and down for hours and right. just people watch and enjoy everything that's going on around you. 
And you know, the 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 our neighborhood, the the center of our neighborhood on Arenas Road is is Give is there. So you know, many many people feel you know that 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 is a much better location than being in the ballpark a, a mile uh, from downtown. Um, but there's also been this renaissance of Palm Springs over the last uh, six seven years, and Pride has been part of that renaissance and and this this re rebirth and and new awareness of uh, folks wanting to come to the desert uh, from not just the United States but around the world. Right, right. Um, um, and, and pride has has fueled some of that, and we have we have growing numbers of of attendees that come from Canada. Uh, eight to ten percent on any year uh, attendees come from Canada. We have a growing number of folks coming from uh, uh, China or Japan and Korea. Um, always have had a good number of folks come from Australia and Europe. There's been a steady growth in in travel coming out of Great Britain and and Germany especially. Uh, so the, the Europeans are continuing to come out in, in a big way. And, but more importantly, in, in addition to that international travel, um, you know, our local domestic audience, we, we virtually have attendance from every state in the union uh, come to Palm Springs uh, pride. And, and a lot of that has to do with the growth of Palm Springs, the, the new vibe in Palm Springs, and, and air travel. So the increase in air travel coming from other, other key markets has been, um, you know, a, a big factor of, of the growth uh, in Palm Springs. And it's only going to be better this year because now we've got JetBlue's uh, uh, Southwest Airlines. We've got new, new flights on um, uh, Alaska. So, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's continued optimism that even without COVID, we would uh, be continue to enjoy some uh, positive attention on Palm Springs and how diverse our community is. And, 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 and the fact when you come to Palm Springs and you get to hang out with our LGBTQ population, we're friendly. We're, 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 we're just a cool bunch of people that, uh, you know, enjoy hanging out. And it's very different than going to a Pride in Manhattan or Los Angeles just a few hours away. Right. With very right. different, very different feel, very different vibe. Um, and you really get that, lay, that laid back, relaxed uh, uh, Palm Springs vibe, uh, you know, when you experience Pride in Palm Springs. Um, and that that is a great reputation to have today, uh, to to have such a diverse audience, to be able to stand on the street and watch uh, people of all shapes and sizes and colors and and youth. You know, we have the largest contingent of youth participating in in our Pride Parade of any other parade that we're aware of. Um, I think in 2019 we had close to 500 Gay Straight Alliance youths from uh, virtually every school throughout Coachella Valley wow. um, and, and, and Idlewild and, and, and going into Corona. Um, but, uh, yeah, and, and that's been a big focus of ours is to make sure that youth, um, you know, who don't have a lot of resources available to them in the desert, um, you know, uh, that, that they, they find their place at Pride. They find their place with, with others that are just like them. And they walk down that parade route and they're received, you know, with open arms by the spectators on the sidelines. And many times the spectators are standing and applauding as these youth walk down the street representing their gay straight alliance clubs and if you look closely when you're here this year Sam you're going to see people with tears in their eyes uh, along the parade route when those uh, teenagers are walking down the street because it really strikes a chord um, that many of the people that are watching that parade in their wildest imagination never would have thought they could have marched publicly in a pride parade with uh, right. you know tens of thousands of people applauding them along the side of the street. So it's a moving uh, experience for the spectators to see that. But more importantly, it's such an empowering moment for those high school school kids to come together and, and be able to experience that. 
for many, it's their first pride event. Uh, and, and, and for many, it's the first time that they've been in any kind of a environment that there's so much acceptance and people don't care if they're questioning. People don't care if they've got purple right. hair or, or tattoos or piercings or, you know, they just don't care that, that they're LGBTQ, that they're embraced and celebrated. So that's a wonderful part of, of, of Pride in Palm Springs. And, and uh, I'm just so proud that the Palm Springs Pride organization is is able to make that happen, and and we do that. Youth are is are a huge focus of our organization, and uh, we work with the Gay Straight Alliances through our partner at Safe Schools Desert Cities. Uh, to, I want to talk to about have, that. In, I want to cover that as well. I'm glad you mentioned that. Yeah. So just to be clear, with that many people, we don't expect any kind of restrictions as far as COVID is concerned. I mean, we sound like we have a lot of people, and I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, um, you know, we, Sam, we don't know yet. Um, right. So I, I, you know, that's the easy answer is we don't know. Um, we do know that California is lifting, um, you know, many of the guidelines, okay. but we uh, we don't know on June 15 when those guidelines are lifted. What does that mean for large scale events? Exactly. So, once we get more guidance, um, you know, we'll be able to, if there are guidelines in place and, and maybe it's mask wearing, you know, I, I, maybe, I don't know what it might be, but whatever it is, uh, we're prepared to, uh, to meet whatever the guidelines are. We can adjust any of our programming. We can, you know, we've already got thousands and thousands and thousands of masks on hand. Uh, so we're, we're, we're gonna, we're, we'll adjust and we'll make sure that um, that the any guideline for safety reasons that is in place, um, you know, we will adhere to that. So speaking of safe schools, you are involved, you wear too many hats. One of the hats that you wear is being um, uh, the commissioner for human rights in the city of Palm Springs. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you're also involved with a program called Safe Schools. Yes. So uh, I, I'm very passionate about human rights in so many levels. Uh, let's talk about Safe Schools for a second. What is Safe Schools? So Safe Schools is an organization that uh, works to empower youth through our high schools and middle schools uh, by creating opportunities and social experiences and um, uh, just opportunities to come together, uh, to provide support, to provide education, um, and um, uh, through, through the Gay Straight Alliances at schools across the valley. And we're, we're here to help advisors when and uh, there, there, there may be, um, you know, a hiccup with the way that an LGBTQ student may be respected on campus, or if, um, you know, the, the laws in California may not be followed uh, properly in any school, we can help uh, that advisor and we can, uh, we can meet with um, administrators to help them better understand, you know, what the, what the requirements are and what the laws are when it comes to LGBTQ youth youth in our schools. So uh, we host uh, the Pride Prom. It's the biggest prom that occurs in Coachella Valley. It's hosted through Safe Schools Desert City. Uh, and it's the funnest prom around uh, to have all these LGBTQ youth and, and, and their ally friends together for, for a prom that they just can relax and, and be, be who they are. Um, we host a uh, Pride Summer Camp uh, at the end of the school year uh, up in Big Bear. We do a Rainbow Youth Summit where we bring youth together from all the schools in the valley and we have a, a day-long workshop uh, of programs and uh, educational sessions and opportunities for them to just explore, learn, and again be in that social environment with other, other students that they don't normally get to be in. Uh, right. So now that's what we do. We do that year round. Um, and, and it's just, uh, it's grown from uh, 2011, 12 from about 15 GSA schools. to now we've got 55 gay straight alliances in schools. Wow. In Valley. So that, that is just a wonderful, wonderful resource for our, our, um, LGBTQ youth, uh, in the Coachella Valley. And how and when did you become a uh, human rights commissioner for the city of Palm Springs? And what made you even become uh, 
Uh, well, human, hang on, I'm, I'm just a, a, a passion. Human rights is a passion and it, it rides true to what pride is all about in, in any community around the world. It's it's raising awareness and, and education of the LGBT community and and, and promoting uh, equality uh, and, and fighting the adversity and advocating for uh, social justice and and uh, um, equality and equity for all people um, in, in in a community. Um, the Human Rights Commission just was right up my alley. I, I came on uh, board five years ago. Uh, I was appointed by the city council. Uh, so this is my last year. You're only allowed to serve two terms um, at six years. So this is my last term with the commission. And um, and, and it's just been a, um, a really great opportunity to, um, you know, help, help raise awareness uh, and, and, and really showcase the diversity of our community. And at the same time, uh, provide whatever assistance and support uh, we could when there's challenges and issues in the community. Uh, so it's, it's been a, a great opportunity and I've, I've, it's been a privilege to serve. So let me take you out of that title for a second and just get your own personal feedback. Um, I just found out last night, um, the homeless population in LA County, just LA County, is 66,300. Yeah. Um, and Riverside County, just around the corner. Um, there has, there's, there's a, 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 an increase day by day and a concern um, just from the human rights aspect of it. It's, it's a bigger problem than, than it can even be discussed just for now, but what are your thoughts sure. on that and what um, do you see happening? Yeah, yeah you human know, rights perspective. Sure, it, it's, it's, a, it's a really difficult, right. uh, all-encompassing subject. And, and many, many of the residents in Palm Springs are extremely passionate about uh, how, how can we help the homelessness situation in Palm Springs. And for that, we're very fortunate to live in Palm Springs that we've got so many people that are supportive and, and are seeking a solution. Um, and, and, and the good thing is it's, it's not, it hasn't been a secret. It hasn't been a quiet issue for many years in Palm Springs. Um, it, uh, you know, it was a big issue that we as a Human Rights Commission addressed um, four years ago or so and, and submitted uh, a, a full report on the homelessness uh, situation in Palm Springs to the city council. City council has continued to, um, you know, focus on uh, the big picture of how do we solve this solution um, and, and everybody has a solution right there's a thousand people in the room and there's going to be a thousand ideas on, on how do you solve that solution solutions are challenging you know yep. we watch we watch around the world how different cities are solving or trying to not solve but trying to uh, assist and help the homelessness population that may exist within their community and and it it was easy if we wouldn't have it uh you know it, it isn't easy no it's and, not and it's, it's getting more complicated it, by the minute um, it is challenging but the good thing here is the city is moving uh very fast in looking at um establishing um you know a um uh, uh a homelessness center, and, and I'm not talking about well in the desert, I'm talking about a, a true facility where people will be able to, to go and um, seek accommodation, you know, have showers, have access to the social services that um, many of them uh, would want to have access to. And for those that are, you know, uh, that have interest in getting into, you know, any type of rehabilitation program that we're able to make those connections, you know, in one site, one location where all these services can be provided. So that's, that's, uh, you know, um, you know, on the very near horizon. And, and that too is a short term solution, but it at least is, will give us an opportunity in Palm Springs to um, start providing some immediate assistance in different ways than what we currently do. And, and connecting folks to resources is uh, incredibly important and, and assisting them to 
get into, you know, their uh, an apartment if that's, you know, the, the path that they're ready to take. You know, all of those uh, efforts are extremely important. They're they're laborsome. They're very time consuming and uh, for um, you know to to manage. But that's what we have to do. And and the city understands that. So I think we're fortunate that that the city. Um, uh, is 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 working steadfastly, uh, you know, on the subject. It's never fast enough. Um, you know, it's it's a movement in the homelessness issue in arena is never fast enough for anybody, let alone the the, the individuals that are outdoors living. And you know, it. Uh, but there is progress, um, and and we've got to continue to uh, encourage city council to to move forward. So you being involved in the safe school program and being involved in the LGBTQ community, how is that playing out in the homelessness population that's emerging in Palm Springs and the Coachella Valley? Well, I, I think um, emerging in the sense that maybe we're getting uh, there, there's more individuals, but it's been it's been something that's been in our our region for um, you know for a long long time. Right. Um, you know, so uh, with youth specifically, um, you know, sadly, um, you know, the uh, youth, um, you know, are, are no different from adults when it comes to homelessness. Um, you know, many, many youth, um, you know, across the country are impacted and, and forced out of their homes because of the fact that they're LGBTQ and they become homeless. Um, but, you know, it's so admirable when we see these students that are still trying to stay in school, stay in the system to continue uh, to better themselves. And we have a lot of that. We have a lot of uh, uh, youth throughout the valley that couch surf, that sleep in cars, um, and, uh, and um, uh, you know, they're not officially counted as homeless uh, because they're sleeping in a car, they're sleeping on couches, they're not technically uh, homeless. Which is uh, crazy, that's crazy. Yeah, so our, our, numbers, our numbers of youth uh, may, uh, aren't accurate to reflect the true number of youth that are homeless, um, but um, you know, we're no different than any other city. Um, right, yeah. you know, we, we have youth that are uh, impacted just like the adults are impacted. Um, and, and, and sadly, um, no different than any other city um, you know, uh, across the country, um, you know, when a youth is kicked out of their home because uh, you know, the, the, their parents learn <laughs> you know, that they're LGBTQ. You know, that, um, you it's know, still going on, 2021, and the shit's oh, yeah. still going on. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the sad yeah. part, yeah, that's the sad Historic. part. What do you see for Pride in the future? What's your vision for five years from now? Well, I think we have to continue to serve as a, a platform to provide support uh, and services and education uh, for our youth population. Um, you know, it is a primary focus of, of this Pride organization is to support youth in, in, uh, uh, how, in any way that we possibly can and uh, in, in, in engaging them with the knowledge that they need and connecting them with the services that they need, whether it's it's, it's answering their questions about sex or, or providing, you know, providing them resources and letting them know where to go and get those resources. That is just so important because they don't get it at home. You know, we, we're in a very conservative region. Uh, it's not talked about at home. Yeah. And when, if a student is having, you know, they, they understand that they may have some mental, uh, you know, feelings that they're, they're, they need to deal with, um, they're not readily talking about that at home. So, you know, we, we have to continue to help our, our youth and the community because we are a much older region. You know, we're not a region that has all the support services for youth. That's not that's not what this region is all about. It's the golden retirement community, right? Um, so they're, they're, the lacking resources for youth is, is continuing to be uh, a top priority uh, for the organization and, and serving as that platform that showcases the diversity of who Palm Springs is. You know, when 50% of our population is LGBT, LGBTQ, you know, we have to make sure that there is a presence of the LGBT community at 
every level of uh, civic operations, uh, the police department, fire department, and and if there's not if there's not representation of the LGBT community, then we're not representing the LGBT community in Palm Springs through the services that the city supports and, and provides. So that is going to continue to be a a um, a, a, a calling, calling for the organization for years to come. And when it comes to the Pride event, the, the, the Pride event, um, you know, we expect it's going to have a great legs for, um, you know, years to come as long as we continue to nourish this gathering and, and make it fulfilling for folks when they do come together right. and they can appreciate that opportunity to be themselves, uh, express who they are in this environment and not have to look over their shoulders. Um, so I think we've got some good years of growth in Palm Springs and um, you know, I'm, I'm looking forward to that and, and I'm not going anywhere. I'm, I, I wanna see how successful we can be in five to six years. Well, glad to have you. Thank you so much for this information. And I'm sad that yeah. you're leaving um, the human rights part of it, but I'm sure you've done your part. Um, and I'm, on that, I do thank you. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a forever issue um, yeah. as it evolves every day. Thank yeah. you for this lovely half an hour and um, happy Pride. Uh, it'll be my first one in November. So excited. Um, yes, uh, I'll be looking for you in the crowd. <laughs> you find me. I'm volunteering, actually. Um, oh, good. good. Yeah. So for the listeners, I hope you found this of value and uh, happy pride to you all out there. And for whatever it's worth, I know it's a slogan, but uh, be you. Don't be anything else. Be you. Happy pride. And uh, please subscribe. It helps me um, to do this week after week. And on that note, thank you, everyone, and see you next week. Take care, everyone.